Hey, this is Sandy. Welcome to our Wee Tennessee Homestead. Um, been a while since we put a video out. I've recorded many of them and they're still sitting on my can on my phone. And uh, so this one's going up today. So I wanted to go ahead and give you a an update. Um, Tim got uh, a bunch done on our hoop house. Um, if you have watched any of our other channel or other videos, We've talked about putting a hoop house up before, and uh, when we um, unexpectedly got custody of 23 rabbits a few weeks ago, um, we needed a place to put them. So um, Tim went ahead and worked on the hoop house. It's still in progress. He's still got to trim some boards. We still have to put something on the sides uh, so that the plastic can be rolled up and, and locked in place easily. Um, to let air flow through. We're still working on doors and stuff, but we needed something that would provide uh, shelter for the bunnies. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this around. So this is the the front door of the, the, the hoop house. Tim still has to get a generator out here and uh, cut the, the, the plywood on either side to form it to the shape of the, the hoop house. Um, for a door right now, we've got a piece of, um, blue dow board or insulation board that slides across and then, um, you know, we like to repurpose things. The flap that comes down is actually the top piece of quilted material from a, um, from a box spring. Uh, we took a box spring apart and used the material from that. So, um... We're gonna go ahead inside and you can see the inside. Now, um, we used pallets for the base. Um, Tim still had some seven foot pallets from uh, a company that he used to work for. So um, we used three of those on each of the long sides. So 21 feet long, plus a little bit of a nose down at that end. Um, we used I think 20 foot lengths of maybe half inch PVC, uh, half inch PVC, schedule 40 PVC for the hoops. Now what we did, we attached them to the pallets and um, brought them down some so that there was some stability there. We used these um, single, uh, single screwed um, conduit clips. Um, that's not the right word, but you, you get what I'm saying. Anyway, um, for the sides to, to keep the, um, the PVC the right distance from each other, he used some heavy duty wire. Um, a couple runs there a run at the top and then same on this other side that also has given us something that we can um, tuck the plastic in when we roll the plastic up. Um, these are our bunnies. There's a mama. She's got two of her babies still in there. I've got to break them away this week. We just took two out the other day. Um, this is one of our breeding does. And that is Lady White, whom we had uh, given away earlier this year, and she came back to us. This is one of our books. We have two books that, that we inherited with this batch of rabbits. These are two babies that uh, we uh, got from the, the couple that we got the rabbits from. Um, really nice couple. We had sold them some rabbits. Um, earlier this year and they just were in a position time-wise they just couldn't couldn't take care of them anymore because of time they did a really good job of taking care of them these rabbits were in really good shape um, they just didn't have the time to take care of them so we got them um, so those are we we inherited uh, three does two bucks and a whole bunch of babies um, that's one of our bucks there he's a pretty baby got two more babies over there and then uh, these guys were born in July. Um, everybody's just kind of, um, it's warm out here. We, um, 
We've got a thermometer out here now, and uh, when it started getting up in the 70s, we came out and started opening everything up. You know, it's been in the 40s and 50s at night, so it's been good. It's been in the 60s in the daytime, um, but let me turn this around. But I want to talk to you about hoop houses. Tim and I have never had a hoop house. We've read some stuff, have some books. But, um, so we didn't have a blueprint to build on, which I think Tim, for, for using mostly scrap other than the PVC, I think he did a really great job for what we have. Um, we didn't know how hot it gets in a, in a, in a hoop house and how quickly it can get hot in a hoop house, which is great for plants unless, you know, you don't want to burn your plants up either. Um, but we learned the hard way. That it gets hot it can get really hot in a hoop house even if it's in the 60s outside or 70s um, a hoop house heats up really really fast so we just got thermometers in here um, let me take you over here and show you what we got okay so we've got a couple thermometers out here it doesn't look like a thermometer it's a wireless sensor so this wireless sensor is hooked to a weather station in the house so if we're in the house we can just glance over and see what the temperature is out here and what the humidity is out here then over here i have another sensor and actually we're going to move it to the other end because that's where the sun comes um so this sensor goes to this little box that sits on the table and we've got three sensors in various places one's in the chicken coop one's in another location and what this does um it actually i can set a high and low alarm for temperature and humidity and the box on the table squalls but i have an app on my phone so i can mo remotely monitor this even if we're not home um and it will alarm if it goes above or below the parameters that I've set. So, so what happened, we, we lost two rabbits to heat, which we've had that happen before anyway, just in normal cages um, in, in the middle of the summer when we, when we had the high 90s weather. Um, but that just tore us up because we didn't realize how hot it had gotten out here. And we love our bunnies. Uh, we love all of our animals very much. You know, we want them to lead happy, healthy lives and, um, you know, be well taken care of while they're in our care. So because we lost two bunnies, I immediately went on Amazon and started looking up, um, Greenhouse thermometers, wireless thermometers, remote thermometers. I did a bunch of different searches. Um, if you are looking for a, a remote uh, sensor so that you can monitor your animal, um, your, your animals like in a, in a, a chicken coop or uh, a barn or a hutch or whatever, make sure you look at the distance um, the, the range that that thing has from the, the sensor to the, the base, um, cause that's going to be important. Um, these run off of Wi-Fi, and, um, they have a range of 328 feet from the, um, from where the, the receiver is in the house to where you place your sensor. So we are, uh, we're a little over, I think, 200, maybe two, 250 feet or so from the house. Um, I really want to move that one sensor to the other end, but I'll have to see how the reception is for that because of the distance. Um, so really keep in mind if you're using something like a hoop house as temporary shelter, and this is temporary for these guys. We hadn't planned on getting rabbits again until the spring. 
Uh, we're planning on building a colony set up where they can actually um, have some underground lodging. They can get in in the heat of the summer and in the cold of the winter to keep um, to keep their temperature regulated. Uh, so this was unexpected when we got these, um, but um, but if whatever kind of lodging you have for your animals, if you're in a climate where there's some extremes, um, I would highly recommend setting up some kind of a remote temperature monitoring. Um, this, we were sitting, we were sitting at the table eating breakfast and all of a sudden the alarm went off that the temperature had gotten up over 75, which was the, um, the high that I had set for this. I immediately was able to come out, start rolling up the sides, open it up and make sure that, um, that they had some airflow and that they were, you know, that they didn't get too hot. So, um, I just wanted to share that with you, especially if you've never had a hoop house or, you know, you have animals. So I'm going to pause this for a minute. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go outside and I'll show you around the rest of the hoop house, which again is a work in progress. So give me just a second. Okay, so uh, I'm very embarrassed to have anybody see the garden. We started out the garden in the spring and it was good and then... Um, when the groundhogs took out the stuff I had planted and then I had health issues and just all kinds of stuff came up, I never got back out here to take care of it again. Uh, we have planters that need to be redone because of the wood we used and everything. But anyway, so this is the outside of the, um, the hoop house. As you can see, we've got the pallets down there. We've got some pallets on the outside that, once, that when the plastic is um, rolled down, uh, we put these pallets against it to keep the wind from blowing it up. That is temporary. Um, Tim does have some conduit right there. I think he's going to use. Um, we've got to attach the um, the plastic to the conduit, and then we can uh, we'll be able to roll the sides up, which is what we want to do. We want to be able to roll them up and then have something that they can actually hook onto in certain places to, um, to keep it there so that we can, you know, we can roll it up. Cause even once this is transitioned into an actual greenhouse for growing plants, we're going to need that. So down here, again, our, our, our homestead has been as neglected as the, uh, the channel has this summer as far as garden and stuff this right here is a type of taro plant this is actually edible a lot of people would think that this is just um, landscaping material but um, if you get the leaves before they unfurl all the way um, or if you boil these and rinse them and boil them and rinse them and drain them and, and, and boil them again um, you can eat these uh, there's a toxin in them that um, you can't just eat them plain uh, but you can you can cook them and eat them anyway so this is the other end of the hoop house what we are what we're eventually going to do you can see where this comes out at an angle on both sides um the the bow of, of the of a boat the the shape of that uh where it's pointed is what we're eventually going to have um we're going to put a gate here or door here whatever but then we're going to have um some type of structure to be a wind block because our prevailing winds come from the mountains over there come across and they come straight across and hit from this side so there's going to be a wind break of some kind and um that that'll be eventually when we get done again um tim's got to come out here with a generator and cut the uh the wood to the shape of uh, the hoop. This, of course, has to be painted or it will fall apart by the end of the year. Um, you can see down the side down there. 
So um, that is, uh, you can see we did get tr trellises put up um, this past spring. I don't know if I ever showed those or not. I think I have a, a, a video I shot at night that I never uploaded. Um, and actually the ground, the, I had all kinds of beans planted here pole beans and the groundhogs took every single one of them that I had all the way across. I had pole beans all the way across. The groundhog took them. I do still have some tomato plants. Uh, I didn't even know I still had them because the weeds were so high, honestly. Um, but we have one tomato. We've only had three tomato hornworms this year, which has been impressive. Um, but anyway, so... That's my update. You know, again, you're watching this channel because you want to see us learn, grow, make mistakes, learn before you make those same mistakes and stuff. So the fact that we are, our, our stuff is <laughs> definitely a work in progress. Um, but, you know, we're, we are human. We are so far from perfect that uh, we're on the opposite end of the spectrum and uh, we've made lots of mistakes and we're learning and growing every single day and um, so i hope that our mistakes and failures um, can help you learn if nothing else you can laugh at us whatever um, but um, anyway I hope this encourages somebody to just, even if you don't know what you're doing, get started, do something. We'll talk to you next time on our We Tennessee Homestead. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I promise you, you won't get, <laughs> you won't get harassed by notifications. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.